In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? That was a good answer. Are you ready? Yes. 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 One more time. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Much better. Some of you know and remember a young woman named Bowie Snodgrass. Her father was a priest in the Diocese of New York. And she was on staff at the church center many years back. Bowie had a call to ministry that was clear and that I knew would lead to great things. She is now rector of one of the Cardinal parishes in New Jersey. Bowie was a student at Union Theological Seminary and as part of her training, along with other students, was to create what was called a chapel. Hers was successful, and so much of what she said is pertinent to what I will say here today. It also is appropriate as we leave to go back home and do our work. We do not know at what hour it is set, but we know we must be ready. In the monastery, there is an orarium or schedule for the day. We Gregorians do not have hours set out for us. As flexible friars, we are responsible for keeping the hours or the round of hours and solstices on our own. What day, what circumstances, where? In some of Bowie's thoughts during the chapel, how will you be dressed? More of that. How will your soul be dressed? We did the chapel when I was organist in Novoa, Connecticut, and Dewey Bowie was there to be with us. And during the chapel, we had arranged lots of vestments at the back of the church. Uh, we had racks full of fabric and stoles and even a few feather boas. Serious, we did. We asked the congregation to choose from these things from what they would like to look like when the Lord returns. Everyone got to walk the fashion line. We used the aisle as the walkway, and people did all kinds of strange things. And we had um, that, that song from uh, that Sunday, I feel, where the ordinary show was from. But everyone got to walk the line, and some got to talk. There were a lot of connections that stood out, but one that was really, really amazing. <laughs> The senior warden, who was an older woman, came down wearing a chasuble. She was the only one that chose a chasuble. And she, we asked her what she thought, and she said, this is what I'd like to be, and how I'd like to be dressed. At that moment, the Lord comes. It was an interesting moment. I would suggest that some of you here might want to answer the same question. How will you be dressed? More so, how is your appearance as a religious look? Do we have to be in habit, wearing a cross? I'll take the wardrobe thing on the further because suffice it to say I have to trust you all to be tasteful at what you wear. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus uses that illustration. If the head of the house had known at what time the night thief was coming, he would be on the alert and would not have allowed his house to be broken into. Jesus is not saying here that he is coming to steal something. Jesus is saying that he is coming at some time that people will not be expecting him. And when the thieves come, when they aren't expected, it's interesting the illustration can be found also in the Gospel of Luke at verse 12, of chapter 12, 39 to 40. So there's a correlation between the two. But there is more. For those of us who have taken vows, and those of us who are beginning to walk that road leading to vows, they are what will be scrutinized at that measuring stick time when the Lord looks at you and asks you what you've done. There was a sister years ago when we did our, our, our convent, actually, in retreat in uh, um, Washington, and she told a story about a nun, and the nun said to her, you know, when my time comes, they can check me on poverty. They won't get me on that. And obedience, I've been fine. They'll get me on chastity because I've never loved anyone. 
All the totally possessions will be judged on how we have lived the vow of poverty. Do we keep in mind that we have all that is in our lives to enjoy and not feel that we own it? It's all there to be used, we'd like to, but it is not ours to keep. Chastity in this time is not easy, people are not easy, and using them for your advantage is not easy, but our interpretation binds us to more. Obedience, the hard one, is unlike other orders of the church. When we vow, in this community, we vow to the worship, doctrine, and discipline of the Episcopal Church. We were the first community ever to, to have those words in our documents. It leads me to another question that I have in my mind, maybe some of you do too. What about now? I think we're in the end times. I may be wrong, I hope so. There were just too many signs. There's extreme weather, extreme heat, which you all uh, had this, week, this weekend at home as well. So much has changed, so much that we enjoy is gone, and life is never going to be the same again. But the need to be there is real. The scriptures still speak to us, and both Matthew and Luke give us the warning when and how. We can move today's reading, we'll move today's reading from Romans. We can all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Are you ready? Yes. yes. One more time, are you ready? Yes. yes. Much better. 